I get a sense sometimes that the earth almost talks to me. I can tell when a piece of material is about to let go, the pitch of the jackhammer changes, and it's like the earth is singing to me. Who knows what mysteries lie deep within the earth. Hi, I'm Leland Swenson, and I've always made stuff. I made stuff when I was a kid. My dad was an orthopedic surgeon, and before he worked on people's bones, he practiced with tools on wood in the shop, and so I had access to tools and learned how to use the tools, make stuff. As a kid, you subscribed to comic books, and one of the ones I subscribed to was Batman, and Batman had this cool cave. So I tried digging caves, but Everything is sand out in western Michigan. And so when I came out here and saw a little depression in the cliff, we live on a ridge, and so there's like steep sides, I figured, why not enlarge it? I don't remember what, uh, how he told me about it. He certainly didn't ask. I, I think I just wondered where he was. Now, I do remember when he rented the, the jackhammer. So I suppose at that point I knew about the cave. <laughs> But I never heard gunpowder explosions. I started doing it with um, pick and shovel, and it, in a year I only made a few feet, and it was really tedious. So I started drilling holes in it and putting in gunpowder and blowing that up. But that was real random. I couldn't get precise results. And I finally discovered jackhammers, and I navigated by compass and by keeping track of my distances. And over there is the Jared room, just to help you get some sense of where things are. The Grand Hall is probably about here. And there's my castle. Every man should have a castle. So here is the original entrance of the cave. Um, this is our cave. A gate to keep coyotes out. And of course, on the roof, we have a duck to remind people not to go smashing through this low entrance. So the cave of art and myth begins here. And you look down at the end with all the skeletons, some of them with treasure and bottles of rum and so forth, you can see why it's also called the Pirates of the Caribbean Room. And this is the entrance to a complex of rooms. It begins with my middle son Blake's room. Various sorts. This guy's eyes used to follow and he used to speak. And these pictures were from the Dollar Tree. They changed from frightening to pleasant, depending on what angle you view them. This is the room dedicated to my son Jared, the room of the mad scientist. He's got old Millennial Falcon models, and he uh, was called J Swan when he was out for water polo, so we got a swan. This is the dragon's mouth, and if you look at the ceiling, you can see why it's called that. And um, we used to go down here on hot days and cool off. We're now headed to the very last room in the cave, um, the Rose Patricia Walls room. Uh, Rose Patricia Walls was my best friend, Leola. She died in her 60s of cancer. And after she died, I created this room for her, and I had her husband come up and her children and a few of her former students, and we spent a weekend memorializing her life. I used to consider myself an artist because I was an art major in college but I've always said he's way more creative than, uh, than I am. Even though that's how I made my living, and even though that's what I majored in school, he's very, very creative. So uh, unconventionally so, but. <laughs> and down this way, the Hall of the Mountain King, 
There are dark dwarves and light dwarves and small dwarves and large dwarves. Here you gotta be careful because you're going between a baby elephant and its mommy. Here we have heroes and heroines and weapons. The ones with boobs, of course, are the heroines. Be careful where you sit. Um, if you see these teeth moving, um, I would get off. Oops, mice. Did the kid ever bleed over into other aspects of life? Um, not directly, but it meant that, you know, I was busy doing that instead of doing something else. Although it's really good exercise, it kept me in pretty good shape. He would commute down to Loyola. He'd be down there all week. He'd come home. And I, I've been home all week with three young boys, so I was thinking I'd be welcoming some adult conversation or maybe a free time, little bit of free time as he watched the kids, but then he'd disappear. I used to joke and say that I was a cave widow and the kids were cave orphans. I would ask my mom, I was a time, uh, time for dinner. Um, Shall I go get dad? She'd tell me, oh, no, 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 he's in LA right now. Um, <laughs> you don't need to go get him. And then the flip side of that, I'd, when he was here, she'd be like, oh, go get dad, he's down in the cave. Um, and I'd be like, oh, really? I thought he was in LA. And I just like never knew where he was at. He spent a lot of time in here just digging his heart away. Well, let's see, what did I do with that sign I was gonna put up? Lose my own head next, right? Yeah, okay, hand it to me. I think she thought I was crazy and that I ought to be spending the time with the kids, and unfortunately she's probably right. It was a competitor for above ground time with Debbie and the children. But now she does show it to people and I think she's, she's actually kind of proud of it. At one point when the kids were older, uh, we started having, we had a couple Halloween parties down here. And at that point, it became something that the family could do together and enjoy together. That was a really good family experience coming together and decorating the whole place up. And of course, now we never take down the decorations. Um. You know, it, it has uh, become something that so many people have enjoyed. So it's sort of come into its own. And I was actually kidding when I told him, you know, well, why does everybody else have a, a room, but I don't? It didn't really make that much of a difference to me, but this is a pretty magnificent room. And um, I was very touched when he brought me down here and he showed me what he had done. Going back this way is De Debbie, and this room, I try to represent different aspects of Debbie's personality. We have the sun goddess representing the warm and beneficent side of Debbie. We have the lovers hugging there, or the passionate side. We have the mermaid, which would be mystical Debbie. We have a mere cat because Debbie loves animals. And finally, we have overpowering and directive Debbie. I try to never take it for granted that I have this amazing, like, eighth wonder of the world right under my house. This is his legacy. This is his grand art project for the world. I mean, it, it sort of grew organically over the years, and I had a rough idea of where I was going, first to make the circle and then to go all the way through the ridge and come out on the other side, and then to make rooms for the most significant people in my life. And I just don't want to be like, a majority of people that just pass through their lives and at the end they go, what happened? I want to, to be able to say that, well, I tried to do something. I tried to do interesting things creatively. I try to work on my relationships to try to improve those. And the whole purpose of life is to keep trying to do a little better of whatever you're doing in all the aspects of your life.